Hi, welcome to ECNM Ask videos. This is a, a series of short videos brought to you by ECNM Magazine, where we go through and we answer questions that come from webinars, articles, and so forth uh, here on ECNM. And we try and get you some short little answers that can help you out in the field. So anyway, I'm Randy Barnett, and I'm an electrical journeyman. Uh, been in the field a long time, do a lot of training now, writing and so forth. You'll see me on ECNM Magazine. Now, what we want to talk about today is electrical safety. And we're going to use the brand new, at least as of today, the NFPA 70E, the 2024 edition. And it tells me in here, anytime that I talk about a code or standard, unless I specify what edition I'm talking about, it says we're always using the current edition. So since the 2024 is now effective, we're going to go ahead and talk about the 2024. And the question uh, that we have is, is, it always seems like it's not only a point of confusion, but when we go out in the field, we see violations of this, all right? And it has to do with labeling. And the question was, <clears throat> excuse me, it says, what has to be on the arc flash warning label? And ours mm -hmm. contains both a PPE level and the calorie level. I understand that is not okay. Please explain. Well, let's go to uh, in article 130 on our electrical safe work practices of the 70E standard. It tells us 130.7H in particular, tells us what we have to have on an arc flash warning label. And first of all, there are two things. I have to have the nominal voltage level. And that's, it doesn't, it says nominal voltage level. It doesn't say the voltage level when the door is open. Okay. It, because if you think about it, if the, it doesn't matter if the door is closed, it's still a 480 volt piece of equipment on the inside, isn't it? So I need the nominal voltage level on that label. And I need the arc flash boundary. So that arc flash boundary, that's where am I going to be safe in the event of an arc flash. In other words, I don't want anything worse than a second degree burn on my body. And that's always a little point of confusion as well, because people say, oh, well, uh, that's where the incident energy drops to 1.2 calories per centimeter square. And that's true. And then they say, and that's the onset of a second degree burn. Well, that's true if your skin is exposed to that 1.2 calories for one second. So if I have a circuit breaker that's operating in 30 or 50 milliseconds or whatever it is, okay, that's certainly a lot quicker than one second. I'm not making any guarantees, but I'm just saying you need to think about these things when you look at that label, all right? So I have to have at least the uh, voltage, nominal voltage level and the arc flash boundary on the label. And then it says I must have at least one of the following. It says I must have the available fault, uh, or excuse me, the available incident energy and the corresponding working distance. Okay, so I could have my you know, 3.7 calories at 18 inches or whatever it is. It says, or I must have the minimum arc rating of clothing. So in that case, it would say minimum arc rating of clothing, 3.7 calories, or any site-specific level of PPE. So let's talk about that confusion then. So we see on the label, it might say 3.7 calories, and then uh, HRC2 or whatever it is, or HRC1, whatever they want you to wear. They're talking about the old hazard risk categories, right? And the, the you know, hazard risk category one, what we now call PPE category, uh, goes up to four calories. So anyway, it gets kind of confusing then if we have them both on there, because really all I need is 3.7 calories of protection. I don't need the four or the eight calories that might be uh, required for some PPE category level. However, what some companies do is they'll put their own site-specific level of PPE, which to me makes good sense because we have our everyday work clothing. And so our everyday work clothing may be rated for eight or 12 calories or whatever it is. And I may designate that in my electrical safe work procedure as I may say our everyday work clothing shall be, you know, minimum eight calories per square centimeter, whatever, and all this other uh, PPE that we have to wear. And it says here at our facility, we're going to call that uh, uh, PPE category alpha. So I can put that on my label. You have to wear PPE category alpha 
to work on that 3.7 calorie piece of equipment and you'll be protected. Because really, I'm not going to go out most likely and buy four different levels of PPE, huh? I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy probably at, at uh, two. I'm going to have my everyday work clothing and then I'll probably have some 40 calorie suits. That's really what happens out in the field, isn't it? So we need to clear up that confusion on the labels. Now, you don't have to go and replace your existing labels uh, if they're wrong. The only time we have to replace them is if we've updated equipment. And it tells us that in this same section. It says that I have to review my data every five years, but I don't have to replace the labels. If I've used the previous edition of the, the uh, 70 e standard to put those labels on, that's fine. The, um, there are exceptions for that, okay? Uh, for instance, I, I don't even have to have a label on the equipment. In fact, and it talks about and supervised industrial installations and so forth, as long as I have the data readily available. But I've always seen the labels on the equipment. Labels have to be of sufficient durability and so forth, which we understand that. So that's my labeling requirement then. I can use either the arc flash incident energy analysis method or what's called the PPE category method uh, in the code in order to come up with what PPE protection I need to provide to the people. On my label, I don't want to put both of those methods of analysis on the same label or it is confusing. On the label, I have to have the voltage level, nominal voltage level of the equipment, I have to have the arc flash boundary to tell me where I'm, I'm safe, where I'm going to start to need arc flash rated PPE. Then I have to have some other type of information to tell me what clothes I put on, whether I use my own site specific, excuse me, but whether I use my own site specific or whether I put the calories at the working distance on there, um, that's up to my my facility as to how they want to do that then, all righty? The other question that ties into that is the use of the PPE category method. And I'm going to use that when I don't have the labels present. And so what you want to do is you want to go to 130.7 and you want to take a look at uh, 130.7C and you want to take a look at the PPE category method. And there are three tables. The first table tells you whether or not you're likely to have an arc flash hazard. If you're not, you don't have to worry about it. The uh, If you do, then you proceed. If it's likely that they think you might have an arc flash, then you proceed to table number two. Table number two, and these tables are actually numbered differently in the standard, but the second table is going to tell you what PPE category clothing to select based on that type of equipment um, and certain parameters that they provide what PPE level of clothing you need to protect yourself. And that takes you to the third table, which tells you, hey, for PPE category two, here's what you got to put on or whatever, okay? So uh, in a nutshell, then that's, that's our labeling requirements and hope we answered that individual's question. Uh, once again, we thank you for attending this ECNN Ask video and listening to this little short and sweet presentation. And this is brought to you by ECNM Magazine, part of the Endeavor Business Portfolio Publications. And uh, thanks for attending. Keep safe until next time.